Hello, I'm Van with Beck Art. So we're here in Wyoming at Our Wyoming Life where they do uh, a project here called the Edible Prairie Project. So they actually donate produce that's raised right here on their farm. This is a fence we worked with them last year on. It's a 3D fence um, to keep out deer and antelope. So the concept or, or the way a 3D fence works is we use electric fence on the outside and then on the inside set in, we've got three, at three feet, we've got a secondary fence of two strands that are at 42 and 52. But when deer or deer-like animals walk up to that fence, they do not have good depth perception. So they don't know to, once they get shot by the front fence, they do not know if they have to jump five feet or 10 feet to clear the second one. So they won't jump over it. We make a very good solid lock game fence that's eight feet tall and different heights which works really well. That would be a lot closer or a more 100% effective fence, but this is a good economical version where you'll see a 98, 99% uh, success rate with it. Occasionally you will get a deer that maybe were get, was getting chased by dogs that will tumble through this fence, but it is very effective and works well. It can also be adapted on the front. Here we're only worried about large animals, so we did uh, three strands on it so uh, you can go to four or five strands with the front, front if you're wanting to keep raccoons out of corn or maybe smaller predators for your garden project. But we're gonna be here today and we're gonna do a health check on this fence because as you can see, her produce, is, Aaron's produce is starting to come in and uh, becoming pretty uh, palatable to animals. So we wanna go ahead and make sure everything's up and running good. So to do this, what we'll do is we're gonna walk around. We're gonna check all of our gates here Make sure we've not got any jumpers. Any of our underground cable has breaks. We did notice where um, we've got it tied back out of the way right now, but the underground cable running through here was actually broke when some equipment came through. So we know that's gonna be one place we need to fix. So we went ahead and trenched this up and we've prepped it. I'm using a tester here that's a fault finder. And what I can do is lay this fault finder on the fence. And as I do that, it's gonna give me a voltage. If I've got a fault anywhere on this fence or short, it will actually give me an amperage reading as well. So right now we're doing extremely well. Uh, we're almost 10,000 volts on this fence. So what we would do is we would continue to work our way around. We're gonna check our end strains and any insulators, make sure none's got broke through the winter or anything running through is broke one and uh, go all the way around to our energizer. And at that point, we'll test the ground on it and make sure we're getting sufficient grounding. That will vary from time to time. Being here in Wyoming, this ground gets really dry. So as it does, you'll see your voltage drop, but you also take away the effective shock on animals because the, for an electric fence to work, it, it uh, requires moisture in the ground. So the way we can beat that or work around it is we used our middle line here as a ground. So it is on insulators, but goes around and ties into a ground rod. So if an animal tries to stick their head between the two wires, they'll receive a shock and uh, prevent them from trying to go through it. All right, so we've moved around by our energizer here and we wanted to show you a few things. So one, as we do wildlife fence here, uh, we need to talk about voltage requirements. Dealing with uh, hoof type animals like deer and antelope, they're not gonna ground very well. So we need a really good voltage for those animals. So we wanna see five to 6,000 volts. We're typically required to keep cows in as two to 3,000. Because we're excluding them from a food source and a highly desirable food source, we need to be up in that five to 6,000 volt range. So we tested on the other side, we're in 9,500 to 10,000 volts. We've actually shorted this fence out on the far side so we can test our ground. Because we do know we're aired here, we wanna make sure we're getting the good ground. 
in this area, we're also gonna probably come back out in a month or two in late July, early August and test this again because it's gonna to continue to get drier and we're gonna lose moisture and that con connectivity back through the soil to our box. What we did was we shorted our fence out to get it under 2,000 volts on the far side of the fence. Then we come around to our last ground rod and use a digital voltmeter. So we've hooked on, we've only got one ground rod with this box. If we were using a larger one, we would have multiple ground rods spaced out at 10 feet. But with this one, we're uh, hitting about 0.1 to 0.2 kilovolts. And that's where you want to be is under 300 volts or 0.3 kilovolts. So we know at this time, we've got sufficient um, ground for this uh, fence. One thing we want to do, we talk about with livestock, training them to electric fence. So what we want to do here is train wildlife to it. So you can see that we've had some flagging put up around this fence and what that does is that makes that fence more visible as deer come in. So if they're not used to having a fence in an area, we want to make it more visible, slow them down to get a good shock. And then we also at times, if we're having a lot of deer pressure or wildlife pressure, we will put aluminum foil on this and uh, smear peanut butter on it. Because if we can shock them in front of the eyes, it'll tend to turn them away. Where if you shock them behind the eyes, a lot of times they'll lunge on into the garden. That's one uh, thing about electric fence is it is safe. The reason it's safe and we're running 10,000 volts compared to uh, your home electric is one is it's low impedance, so it sends out a pulse. So if you do get shocked, you can pull away from it. So if you have a horse, one of your kids, uh, the cattle come into this, you don't have to worry about it being a lethal shock. It is a non-lethal shock, and, um, but it will turn them away and discourage them from trying to get into this food source. All right guys, so that was a good health check on our fence uh, here, our 3D game fence. It has been very effective. They said uh, they had one deer get in last year and that's when they left the gate open. So uh, not a whole lot the fence can do there, but it has worked really well for them. Uh, we're going to make sure we maintain a uh, good voltage, our grounding stays sufficient as we continue to get drier and drier because as we get drier, this food's going to become more desirable too for this wildlife. So this Beckart smooth wire is doing a really good job, high tensile, and um, it's holding up really well, no corrosion spots or anything. So guys, when you're looking at electric fence, remember Beckart made in the USA. Thanks for watching.